winter quantity. Here you get. So, yeah. In our secondary school, we were introduced to just these three mass, time, and what length. Length is measured in meter, not kilometer. So mass, time, and length. So these three are examples of what fundamental quantity. I know you get that. So these are fundamental quantities. So of course, derived quantity are quantity that they are what derived, they are gotten from fundamental quantity. In fact, that is why the, the name is called derived quantity. For example, if I want to talk about area, area, you will see that we take length and length, length times what breadth. The product of length and breadth is what area, and that is what meter times meter. The unit here is what meter square. It is being derived from this. All these things, they've We've, they've already, you're already familiar with them in your class. They must have talked about it, but my, my work today or my job here is to teach you how to answer some questions from the past question. So this is area, volume is there for this, that is length times breadth times height. Of course, it's meter square. Then we move to density. All these ones, I know you are very familiar with them, which is what mass over volume. So what is mass here? Mass is what kilogram over meter square. And that is what kilogram meter per meter square, per meter cube rather. Volume is meter cube, not meter square, per meter cube. So you can go on and we have a lot of derived units in physics, a lot of them. Can go on pressure is there, force is there, um, acceleration is there, velocity is there, density, and, the, and so on and so forth. So, another important thing this is derived quantities. So, another important one I want to discuss is what dimension. So, dimension is a special way of of rewriting this derived quantity. For example, now, if I want to write this area now in form of a dimension, area on, you know that area is what? Area is what, you can tell me what area is. Length times what, breadth, and that is what, meter square. So instead of writing meter square, we can rewrite it as what, L square. Because both length and breadth is measuring the length, the distance between two points. So that is what meter square. For example, this density I've written here, if I want to write it in form of dimension, density, we know that is what mass over what volume, right? So mass, instead of writing it as what kilogram, so that it will be in form of what derived unit, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to write it as what M over what volume. L cube, which can be written as well, M raised power minus three. So I think that is clear. So from the past question, which the admin is going to show you now, we share on the screen. And I want to pick some questions there so that we understand better to illustrate all these points I'm saying and to show you how JPEP has that question. So I want to check your past question, the admin is going to project that to you or share the screen, and you are going to see the particular question I'm going to show you now. So if you, um, page, page, the first question I'm going to be picking is from page one, on page 110, question number 23. Page 110, Question number 23. So use dimensional analysis to determine which of the following questions, equations, certainly wrong. So these are the options given to us. They give us I, this is equals to Vt, 
I I F is equals to what? Mass over acceleration. I I I F is equals to V. M V over T I V I but H is equal to what V square over two G and um, the last one here V is equal is what V is equal to what two G H or raised to power what one over two. So all these ones, you are going to solve them one by one and you are going to dictate which is correct and which is wrong. So the option given to us here, A is what? They said A is what? I only. B is what? I and what? I, I. C is what? I, I. And I, I, I. D, let me write D here. Permit me to write it here. I have what? I, I only. So our job here is to dictate the one that, that is what's dimensionally wrong. So the first thing here, the V is representing velocity in I. So this one is always is wavelength, is always measuring what's meter. So velocity here, what is velocity? Velocity is what displacement over time. That is what you'll be thinking. Displacement is measuring in meter and meter, meter. Displacement is measured, that is L over what? Over time, which is seconds, right? times what T here is measuring in seconds. So this one is cancelled. This one will cancel this one, this one, and this one. They are equals. That means this one is correct. So it's not wrong. I'm not going to pick it. So option A is cancelled out. So I have B, I have F is equals to M over what A. So A there is representing acceleration. So force, of course, we know force. What is the dimension for force? Dimension for force is what? Meter length. Uh, that MLT raised to power minus two. So I want to check the right hand side of the equation. If it's, if it's equal to the left hand side of the equation, then it is correct. So I have M here, M is T M, which is length over what LT raised to power minus two. If I will write this one very well, I, this one will give me what M raised to M L raised to power minus one, T raised to power two. So we can see that this one, this is F here, and this one is what? M over A. Can I see that the time did not give me the same thing? So this is wrong. I will cancel it. So it's not part of what I want to do. So the next one, to know which other one that is wrong, I'm going to test the third option given to me. They say F is equals to what? M V over T. So let's check whether it's the same thing. F is what? I just mentioned F to you now. It's what? M L T raised to power minus two. So this is our F here. Can you see? I hope you can see it clearly. So I want to write this M V over T now. My M is T M. I've written velocity to you before, which is which can still be written as what L T raised to power minus one over T raised to over T raised to power one. Of course, you can write it as T only. So if I want to rewrite this one very well, I have what M L T raised to power minus two. So I have ML to raise to power minus two, ML to raise to power minus two, that means this one is correct. So, so far it is only of the II that is wrong. So let's check for this one too. H is equals to V square over two G. So H is measured in meter, V square, V is measured in what? Um, v is acceleration, um, velocity, and G is what? Acceleration due to gravity. So let's check whether these two will give us this. So I have V square here. V is what L T raised to power minus one, right? All square. So I can write this as what L square T raised to power minus two, right? This is V over what two over G. Two here is constant, so it does not is dimensionless. It does not have any unit, so I can write two there. So G is measuring what M. I'll be sorry. Is measuring L T raised to power minus two, and if I write this. It will give me divided by LT raised to power minus two, right? Remember, this one is H. So I have what this one cancel this one. I have L T raised only L, and this is correct because this one is measuring what H, which is height, is measuring what meter, and meter is always in L. 
the last one here, I have what? GH. B is equals to GH. So let's see whether it's correct. So G is what? Meter. Right? Meet, uh, that is what? L theory to power minus 2 times what? L. So I have what? L square theory to power what? Minus 2. So, so far, So, so far, this is also wrong. So let me check the option again to see whether I've written the right option. All right, so I go for D. So despite the fact the G um the fifth one is not correct, but it's not included. It can be it can be a trap. You know, there are sometimes these people that are setting your exam, they are very, very they are very, very deliberate in the, the option they give. They, they they know that this is not correct and they did not include it as part of your option. So it'd be wise. So far, we saw that II I is not also correct. They put II I only. That is the only correct one that is in this option. So this one, of course, is correct. This one is correct. This one, this one, I, I and I, I is not correct. I will pick this one. So that is I'll pick option D for my question number 23. I hope that is clear. So I'm going to page, page, Page 111 now. So there are a couple of questions there relating to what's our area of discussion. So question number 26, he said what? Which of the following are derived units? Which of the following are derived units? So earlier before now, I mentioned fundamental units and derived units. I say fundamental units are units that they stand alone. They stand independently. They don't depend on anything. And if you look at that, this is it here. Look at your screen. You are going to see where my hand is pointing at is the fundamental. So we want to check the derived units. So I is what meter, of course, meter is here. So it's not, it's not part of it, it's fundamental. Kilogram is there, it's not part of it, it's fundamental. Ampere, ampere, I don't write ampere. Ampere is current, it's part of fundamental. And the last one there is joules. Joules, that is what energy. Joules is that is energy. So energy is what a derived unit. Energy is a derived unit. So energy is my answer there, which is sorry, I did not see column. That is option B. Column is also a derived unit. I is meter, I is column, I I is what kilogram, I V is ampere, and V is joules. So column, post column, and joules are both what derived units. So that is question number 26. So question number 27, the dimension for power. So dimension for power. So power. Power is equal to what? Work done over time taking. Work done over time. And work is said to be done if a force cover a distance in a certain time. So what is our dimension for power, uh, dimension for force? Dimension for force would be M L T raised to power minus two times what M over T. So we want to balance this up, we want to make it one. So I will have what M square L T raised to power minus one. So which option is that? Which option is that? Sorry, minus three. Because I have one here, if you use law of indices, if I have T raised to power minus two divided by T. So law of indices minus, uh, divide means minus. I have T raised to power minus two minus one because there's one invisible one here. I have to raise to power two minus two minus one will give me minus three. That is what m square l to raise to power what minus what three. So which option 
close with that. That is question A. So question number 27 is the answer. So also I'm going to be treating question number 28. So you say which of the following quantities has the same units as kilowatts per hour? Kilowatts per hour. So let's look at the option given to us so that we'll be able to answer the question, kilowatts per hour. So the first option given to me here is what? Force. Option A is what? Force times what? Acceleration. Force times acceleration. Let's see whether it's kilowatts per hour. Kilowatts per hour. Right? So this one is what? Kilowatt per hour. You can balance. Let's balance this up. Let's write it better. Anyway, kilowatt is made, that is power, right? I have power because power is measuring what over time. So I can write what is power now. We just, we just, so power is just M L square T raised to power minus three over T. So this one can be written as what? M L square T raised to power minus four. So any dimension given in this option that will give us ML square T raised to the power minus four, that is our answer. And let's see how we do that. Force times acceleration, we don't give us that. Let's see, force is measured in what? ML T raised to the power minus two, right? Times acceleration. Acceleration is what? L T raised to the power minus two, right? So if I bring all these ones together, law of indices, one one is here, I have M, L raised to power two, T raised to power minus four. So we've gotten it, MLT, ML square, T raised to power minus four. So our option is, our answer there is option A. I believe that is clear. So let me do a brief recap on all what we've learned today. So I started by defining the definition of physics to you and how quantity and unit is very important to physics. Earlier before now, I said physics deals with a lot of measurements. You know, we have experimental physics as one of the branches of physics. So experimental physics is, deals with a lot of experiment. And of course, when we talk about experiments, we try to put some units and some quantities in such experiment. So that is why as far as physics and other natural science is concerned, it is expedient for us to talk about units. And I told you that unit is divided into two. We have fundamental units and we have derived units. I said fundamental units are units that they stand alone and they are five in numbers. The first one is in mass, that is mass. Mass is measured in what? Kilogram. The second one is what? Length. Length is measured in meter. The third one is time. Time is measured in seconds. The fourth one, is what current is measured in ampere. The fifth one is um, is the um, amount of substance, which is measured in mole. I think there are six in number. And the last one is measure is what uh, luminous intensity, which is measured in what candela. So this there are six in numbers, fundamental quantity. Let me recap. Number one, mass, which is measured in kilogram. Number two, time, which is measured in seconds. Number three, mass um, length, which is measured in what meter, amount of substance, which is measured in what mole, and uh, the last one, luminous intensity, which is measured in what candela. So all these ones I mentioned, they are fundamental quantity. 
So the derived quantity are gotten from this fundamental quantity. And derived quantity are just like talking about bringing two fundamental quantity together. When you bring two fundamental quantity, two or more fundamental quantity together, the result is what derived units. For example, now let's talk about area. Area is what length and length. That is L squared. That means when we talk about length and breadth, we are still measuring the same thing, but in different size, in different position. So it's still what I'm picking the length in fundamental quantity and another length from fundamental quantity. So the product will give us what L M um, squared, which is meter square. When we talk about pressure, pressure is what force over area. So force over area, force can be gotten from fundamental quantity. Area also can be gotten from fundamental quantity. Bringing the two of them together, we gave us what? Derived units. So in other words, derived units are gotten from fundamental quantity. Derived units are gotten from fundamental quantity. And how do we get it? When you bring two or more quantities from fundamental quantities together, the result you are going to get is what? Derived units. So, and I also talk about dimension. Dimension is such a way that one to try to bring, you know, there are some units you cannot solve mathematically. So dimension helps to do that very easily, very, very easily. So that is why it is important for us to, that as, even though we know the derived unit of some quantities, we have to do well by also converting those derived unit to dimension. And of course, how do we do dimension? Dimension is just like all our fundamental quantity, the six I mentioned before. For example, mass, mass will just be in what M. Instead of writing mass as a kilogram, I'm just going to write M. Length. Instead of writing length as what meter, I'm going to write it as L. Right? Is that instead of writing time as seconds, I'm going to write it as T. So the operation, the um, division and the multiplication of that, inscribing it in what the derived units. For example, now we the, the look at this power now, we talk about how do I get power to be what ML squared T raised to the power minus three? The M here is standing for the what the mass, because we know that power is equals to what work done over time taken. And work done is what we are doing first time times what the distance. So we have what the acceleration will be L T raised to power minus two because acceleration is talking about meter per second square. So bringing everything together, that is how I got ML square T raised to power minus three over T time of course is T. So bringing everything together, that is why how I got this ML square T raised to power minus four. You get that right? So, and I picked some questions from your past question. I actually picked about four questions, then we solve them. So thank you very much. Next week, same time, we are going to meet. I promise you that the class will be more fun than this one. You no, know, this is just a kick. We are just test running and everything. Just next week, come expecting, and I know that you will, you will be happy when you are going back. Thank you very much for today's class.